Last night, Donald Trump held another stupid rally during yet another pointless GOP debate. And he once again falsely claimed that Hungary borders Russia. And since he so often refers to himself as very smart, I wanted to talk about the mythical man I call fictional Trump. He likes to mock Joe Biden for being at the beach without a shirt on. He does it all the time. It doesn't matter that we don't have photos or video of Trump at the beach. Fictional Trump has been to the beach like a lot. And he was swarmed the many, many times he went by great big strong men with tears in their eyes crying, sir, sir, we've never seen such tan, beautiful bare arms, sir. May we touch them, sir? And obviously, even if we've never seen it, we know it would happen. Everyone knows that. He wouldn't be left alone to enjoy his bare-chested wife, work, and beach time. He'd be too busy tossing out autographed beach balls and auctioning off bags of Touched by Trump's toes sand to the highest bidder. For America, of course. While also flexing his triceps, biceps, and whatever bulging seps he has because they are, after all, legendary. It doesn't matter that we aren't actually even sure that Donald Trump can swim. Doesn't matter that we have never seen, to my mind anyway, any proof of him in any body of water swimming. Doesn't matter that unless you count the viral meme of a diaper Trump sitting on the beach in sad reflection after he lost the election in 2020, he did, there aren't many, if any, photos of the man in any kind of sand that wasn't golf related. It doesn't matter that he might be like my cat Tom, who is, by the way, very often a bit of a one-sided affection, receiving but not so much giving, selfish asshole, and utterly terrified by the very notion of water, particularly water which is very wet from the standpoint of water. But I digress. You see, fictional Trump is all that matters. It doesn't matter that in reality he's a thrice-married serial philanderer and pathological liar who bragged about sexual assault and mocked a disabled reporter. It doesn't matter that he was found liable for essentially rape and bragged openly more than once about grabbing women by the, you know what? He has total respect for women and has done more for women in the history of the world than anyone ever, maybe even God himself. It doesn't matter that he opined on the sex life of his own daughter so often that he had to be reminded regularly by his chief of staff that she was in fact his daughter. He's a family man. It doesn't matter that he cannot cite a single Bible verse when asked after calling that very same book his favorite or that he spends his Sundays worshiping at the Church of the Immaculate Fairway, he is making God great again. Unlike that practicing Catholic Biden who actually does attend church every Sunday. After all, fictional Trump shook that Bible that wasn't his in front of that boarded up church he didn't attend because he's a man of God and not because he wanted to make himself look real tough by tear gassing the protesters who a few days earlier had scared his widow pants off by making wild noises, forcing him to run away like a widow girl to the White House bunker. Fictional Trump is obviously also a patriot. He demeaned John McCain for being captured, attacked a gold star family, insulted a military widow, and called the fallen heroes of war suckers and losers. But he loves our troops, after all. He didn't dodge the draft. Nope, not fictional Trump. The guy went to Vietnam voluntarily. Twice, yep. He was also at Normandy, see, another beach. Piloted the Enola Gay and brokered peace between the North and South in, in like 24 hours. He just said a few things to Grant and a few things to Lee and they were both too scared of him to say, no, no, I don't like that. And so he got it done, okay? It's called the art of the deal, folks. And when it comes to sheer intelligence and mental acuity, fictional Trump has the biggest, most beautiful brain with the best words, believe me. It doesn't matter that he bragged about having the ability to identify an elephant correctly or memorize the order of five whole words. It doesn't matter that he thought nipple and button were the names of countries, that the moon was a part of Mars, or that Charles was a prince of a place called W-H-A-L-E-S, Wales. Didn't matter that he said there were airports and rammed man parts during the Revolutionary War. Fictional Trump is a genius, a stable one at that. 
And while it's true fictional Trump is so obviously such a moral, devout, patriotic Rhodes scholar, he also manages to exemplify perfection in the human form. The man wakes up to a head of naturally full hair and lets it fall where it may. His golden sun-kissed skin is the result of all that time he spends frolicking at the beach. He is not a fetid heap of French fried grease, Diet Coke, Heinz ketchup, and ground up Adderall. He's in tip-top shape, folks. Just watch how adeptly he traverses down a ramp. During his time in office, he made America great again. He didn't golf, tweet, and watch TV 24-7, and certainly not during the pandemic. He completely botched as a result of his inexhaustible ego, indifference to human suffering, and willful ignorance. Nope, he woke every morning at 4 a.m., ran a quick 5K, came back to read some Nietzsche, baked a few batches of wild blueberry scones for the battered women's shelter in Bethesda, brushed Melania's hair, pet the family dog, and played a quick game of catch with his teenage son, whose name he definitely never forgot because he's a family man, remember? Yep, fictional Trump is a bare-chested beach-going, devout family man, and patriotic super genius who loves this country more than anyone in the history of time has ever loved anything. He loves America so much that when he finally had to leave the White House after basically refusing to for a while, he invited a whole bunch of other patriots to come to the Capitol to erect a DIY gallows in honor of his VP and to express their gratitude, tactical helmet shield covered face to face to the unarmed men and women of Congress and the woefully undermanned members of the Capitol Police. He loves this country so much that he just couldn't leave our most top secret national security documents behind for someone with actual clearance to see them. He had to take them with him to his houses where members of the public pay for access. And then when asked like a whole bunch of times to give them back, he had to say he did give them back, even though he didn't. And then he had to show the super duper top secret could get our intelligence asset killed documents to other people who love America as much as he does, like book biographers and staff members with questionable ties to foreign adversaries. And then in a final act of love for America, he has pool boy flood a room storing the video evidence of him moving the documents he said he didn't have, but took because he loves us. Look, fictional Donald Trump loves this country so much that he's even being indicted for us. Well, for you. That's what he wants the cult to believe, and it's what they choose to believe. And the rest of us know it's bullshit. <laughs>